So over the next 12 minutes, I thought we would focus on the Celgene Cellular Therapy Bold Innovation uh, aspiration and how we've delivered on that now uh, in the U.S. and in, in Europe. Uh, there's a long list of disclosures. I, of course, say I'm a Celgene employee. So we're looking to fulfill the promise of cell therapy by innovating boldly and delivering an optimal patient and customer experience. And we seek to do this by having the appropriate breadth and depth of clinical and preclinical investigation as well as commercial uh, capabilities. And of course, the tricky part of all the cellular therapies is the manufacturing. So with the acquisition fully of Genotherapeutics uh, approximately a year ago, we now have a global state-of-the-art manufacturing uh, system uh, at a variety of sites as shown in the bottom right. So from Juno, we have a clinical and preclinical team in Seattle. We have a manufacturing plant known as Jump in, in Bothell. In the uh, Celgene headquarters in Summit, we have a strong clinical and commercial team, as well as now having built out a 125,000 square foot manufacturing plant in Summit uh, to move uh, for commercial as well as clinical supply from what had been the uh, Bluebird product manufacturing done by Celgene in Warren, New Jersey. We are looking to supplement that footprint by having manufacturing uh, and CMO capabilities uh, in Europe and uh, in, in Japan. Uh, we use currently a CMO to process the cells for both BB2121 and LISA cell uh, in uh, Germany in order to freeze the cells before they're transported uh, to the United States for ELISA cell and uh, also for BB2121. Uh, the status, uh, much of the clinical data has been presented uh, excellently yesterday, so I removed those slides from this deck, but ELISA captagene, uh, Merrill loose cell, or ELISA cell, JCAR-17, the CD19-directed uh, product, uh, has completed its enrollment in its pivotal a trial and relapsed in refractory lymphoma, and we look forward to completing the regulatory uh, submission uh, this year. Uh, we now have a name for uh, BB2121, IDECA Captagene Vic Lucel. We haven't figured out what the abbreviation is yet for this. I like IV, but uh, I'm being outvoted by my commercial team right now. Uh, and that has now completed the KARMA trial, which is a trial for fourth line. Uh, relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. That study is fully enrolled to enable a launch uh, in 2020. Now shown in the upper right of the uh, hand of the slide is that uh, the, the cell gene cellular therapy portfolio, while we're in the clinic now primarily with CAR-Ts, will also be entering with a series of uh, TCRs that will be engineered uh, primarily to go after solid tumor targets. And so we look forward to engaging in the breadth of cellular therapies promised beyond uh, the first two launches that we expect in the next two years. So this is the regulatory status with a little bit of a uh, flavor of where we are in Europe. So BB2121, the BB, uh, BCMA-directed cellular therapy program, has both breakthrough therapy and prime designation. This has been extremely helpful in engaging with the regulators on an ongoing basis to make sure we're generating the right data package uh, to speed the uh, review uh, and approval of these agents. JCAR-17, the CD19-directed cellular therapy product that was initiated by Juno Therapeutics, treated its first patient in 2016 as well. Uh, in addition to breakthrough in Prime, we also have RMAT status in the United States. This is a regulatory medicines advanced therapies that gives additional uh, abilities like breakthrough therapy to engage uh, with the FDA. JCAR H125, which started as a Seattle-based uh, BCMA, distinct from our collaboration with Bluebird, uh, treated its first patient in 2018, and some of that data was shown by Al Garfal yesterday. I'll show you a little bit more. And uh, with Bluebird, there is a, a second clinical program, BB212117, and this uses a PI3K inhibitor in the manufacturing process to skew the population. And those initial data were presented at ASH, but I will not be presenting those today. Uh, both JCAR17 and BB2121 have treated their first European patients in 2018 in now more than seven countries and roughly about uh, 35 to 40 patients. So this is the schema which Stan Riddell showed you yesterday of Lisa Captagene Merrill Lucell. The important part here is this is a defined dose product 
where there's an equi equi uh, number of uh, CD4s and CD8s. The manufacturing is distinct from some of the other CD19 products that have been approved and that the manufacturing starts from a purified T-cell population, not from a population of mononuclear cells. Right now we ship the cells fresh to a processing site, whether that's in Seattle or in Cologne, in order to get these purified CD4 and CD8 starting material, and that is what is then uh, cryopreserved and goes into the manufacturing uh, process. We think with this uh, ability to have only T cells, you were, uh, as Carl June pointed out, reduce the risk of uh, odd transduction effects of other cells that might be malignant and cause problems. It also allows us to have more characterization of what is actually going into the patient uh, as there is, of course, interpatient variability. So the pivotal trial uh, started by Juno is Transcend. Uh, this is a seamless phase one, phase two design. Uh, the eligibility criteria by diseases are shown in the blue box. And I do want to point out that this is a broader set of uh, lymphomas that has been studied by several of the approved products. We use a fluorobine cyclophosphamide uh, regimen of 30 and 300 times three days, pretty much across all of the cell gene programs. Dose escalation was performed of 50, 100, and 150 million cells. This is flat dose, not dosed by kilogram, again, to give you more control. And we have chosen to expand into the uh, pivotal cohort, the dose confirmation cohort at dose level two of 100 million cells. Uh, Follow-up is ongoing, of course, and in the gray box, uh, just to explain some of the data set, we have a full data set which we use for safety, and then a core data set uh, focused on dose level two at the, the more restricted DLBCL histology populations, and as you see data, that uh, is what the core population means. So if you look across the three products, left to right, of course, there is one difference in the uh, co-stimulatory uh, domain uh, where lysocell uh, like Kimraya uses 4-1-BB in contrast to CD28. And there's been excellent discussion today about the metabolic consequences of the co-stimulatory domain and how this might affect persistence. Uh, this is a defined ratio, which we think improves our ability to tune safety and efficacy. This is a manufacturing process that does not require a minimum ALC and allows us to have a very robust manufacturing process. Uh, the dose, again, that we're taking is a very tight dose range, uh, looking to target and deliver uh, 100 million cells. If you now line up the three products, the two approved products with Liza Cell, and, and I'd have you focus really on the, the top set of rows, and that's the, the six-month CR rate. We're looking at durable CRs roughly in the 30 to 40 percent range. Liza Cell compares quite favorably or at least equivalently to the other approved products. Uh, if you look at, however, at the toxicity profile, that's where you start to see a, a large difference. And we can argue about what's grade two or grade three based on how many pressors you get and what intensity of pressures between the pen and the lead grading scales. But I would point out that when uh, Steve Schuster has gone back and rescored Lee versus Penn, there was no difference. So I don't think that's a credible way to differentiate the grade three toxicities across the products. Uh, what is remarkable about Lysacel, of course, is the, the markedly decreased incidence of CRS and the slower onset of CRS. Uh, neurotoxicity, depending on how you count it, is also relatively low, uh, below a quarter of the, of the patients, and uh, very few of these uh, patients overall having grade three or four uh, neurotoxicity. And again, we think this is because of the dose, the manufacturing, and the, uh, and the ratio of the cells. So not all products are created different, even if they have the same binder. So this is the current Liza cell program in adult lymphoma and CLL. Uh, we also have a phase three trial that is ongoing in the US and Europe, looking to uh, actually change the standard of care uh, from autologous transplant in patients who relapse within uh, 12 months of first-line RCHOP-based therapy. Uh, we have a, a series of other studies, so the TRANSCEND trial is now looking at, it's called PILOT, and is looking at second-line non-transplant eligible patients in the United States. We have a, a multi-arm combination uh, 
protocol called Platform, where we're looking at JCAR 17 uh, with Dervalumab and also with CC122, which is one of our cell mods that's active in lymphoma. The Transcend NHL01 trial, or Transcend a World, is the uh, study for relapse and refractory disease. Uh, that is the European trial. Uh, and uh, then uh, we're looking at outreach to look at outpatient dosing in the U.S. And then we'll go briefly to our CLL uh, trial. This is data presented uh, by Tanya Siddiqui at ASH. Uh, and what we did find was that the tolerability in CLL was as good as what we saw in lymphoma. So no uh, new grade four or five events were noted. And we were struck by uh, really promising uh, overall response rates of 80% with CR rates of about half that. And uh, we'll have to see uh, as we have more durability whether this really comes out as twice the uh, frequency that Carl has shown from David Porter's data where that plateau is at about 21%. We are able to get very deep responses, and again, the durability will require follow-up and only look forward uh, to presenting that data uh, at uh, conferences later this year. Now, we have three BCMA products in the clinic. Uh, the differences are, uh, they're all 41BB, but there is a human binder for JCAR-H125, and similarly, the manufacturing process starts differently with JCAR-125 than BB-2121. Uh, the Karma Pivotal trial is fully enrolled for BB2121. Phase 1 data was presented at ASH uh, for a trial that started in 2017 by Bluebird for the uh, PI3K manufacturing uh, variant. And the Phase 1 trial for uh, JCARH125 started uh, last year. Uh, so the initial safety data have been shown. This is just to show it to you again. So all grade CRS of about 63%, uh, only 5% grade 3 or higher. 21% of the patients requiring TOSI, all grade neurologic events, 33%, only 2% of these were grade 3 or higher, and only 9% of the patients required steroids. Uh, very promising overall response rates and CR rates with some durability that Al had showed you last uh, yesterday, uh, with the median at about a year in the overall population and higher in those that get to a deeper MRD negative response. The KARMA trial is shown here, again, just to point out that their enrollment was completed in November and 10 European sites participated in this trial. There are two other trials that are now uh, gearing up, both in Europe and the United States. KARMA 2 is looking at a high-risk population of patients as well as other uh, engineering improvements in the manufacturing of the product. And KARMA 3 is looking at a population of two to four prior therapies uh, in a randomized fashion against uh, an investigator's choice. And these trials are uh, opening, uh, KARMA 2 is dosed and KARMA 3 has sites active. Uh, Evolve is the phase one data reported by Sham Malankati and some of it was shown yesterday. Uh, what was striking here is that the 50 million cell dose, there was a dramatic activity shown. Uh, CRS was maybe a little bit higher than what we saw with 2121, but most of these are low grade. A little bit more TOSI uh, and steroid use, but high grade neurotoxicity was quite low. Overall response rate uh, of 82%, and uh, the CR rates are evolving. Al showed you this uh, swimmer plot showing that there's deepening of responses, and the data just aren't too mature to make any realistic comparison. So I want to close just on uh, how with the, the ability to now scale globally multiple products, we feel we're going to be equipped to answer some of the tough questions. And it's these complex uh, complexity of the correlative analyses, because you're not only looking at clinical outcomes, but you need to look at your process and product attributes, and then you want to look at your biomarkers in the patients. And this is not uh, simple. Uh, we now look at about 400 variables. Uh, in each patient uh, for each of the products. And we know that as we pull these together, we'll be able to figure out what exactly might be the answers to the tough questions we all face. Uh, so we look at cell health, we look at phenotypic composition, we look at antigen-specific function, and of course, uh, we are somewhat intrigued by uh, how one might tune what your phenotype is of the cars in order to get a different response. 
So we have a, a built an infrastructure that takes the clinical data, the CMC data, the translational science, and other protocol-dependent data. We show the five key fields here and have very good data control now merging this all together. And we uh, have started to look at this initially with JCAR-15 when we unfortunately had to explain why we saw extreme toxicities, but this was an excellent learning experience for us to now build this infrastructure to apply to all of the cellular products that Celgene manufactures. So we're left with the challenges and opportunities. How do we improve the response rates, durability, response, and safety profile? How do we enable the therapy to work in other cancers? How do we improve on manufacturing, time to product availability and costs? And how do we provide access to patients? And we think we do this by having a broad portfolio, an excellent team, many of whom are in the room today, uh, and really work to define how we get to the better products at the same time we try to address the unmet needs with our first wave of commercial products. Uh, and with that, I'll end. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.